Hi you guys, this is section 7.5 which is linear inequalities. Um, it's a little different than linear equations and I'll explain the difference um, when we get there. I'm going to do three things. I'm going to show you how to graph linear inequalities, how to write the linear inequality from looking at a graph, and in a real life situation. Okay, so um, here's some examples and, and it's a progression to get to where we are. If you remember, when we said graph x equals 3, you just put a dot on 3. Okay, on a, on a line graph. On a two-dimensional graph, if I said graph x equals 3, it was a vertical line on x equals 3. That's the x-intercept, and it's a vertical line. So you can see the comparisons here. If I said graph x is greater than or equal to 3 on a line graph, you put a closed dot going to the right because it's greater than. Okay. So if I say graph x is greater than or equal to 3 on a two-dimensional graph, you still graph that graph the x equals 3 like this, so you still put a closed dot and a vertical line. So there's your x equals 3. But in the same way that you have an arrow going to the right, everything to the right of the 3 as well, all you do is shade to the right of the line as well. So what this is saying is, this answer is 3. This answer is any, any point on the line 3. This answer is 3 or anything above. And the same thing here, it could be any point on the line or 3, or anything greater than it. Okay, here's a different one. X is less than 3, is an open circle going to the left. So everything left of the 3, not including the 3. So if I wanted to graph X is less than 3, very similar here, instead of using a solid line like a closed dot, I need an open dot. So what I want to do is use an open dot here, and then you're going to use a dashed line instead of a solid line. That means it doesn't include it. It's like having an open circle. Okay. And now to the less than mean I'm going to shade to the left. If you look at the book, they take their pencil and shade the whole thing. I'm okay with you shading like this where you put squiggly lines as long as I can clearly see it's to the right or clearly see it's to the left. Okay. So don't worry about wasting time or wasting your pencil. Um, you can just do it like this, where you scribble to one side or the other. So again, greater than goes to the right, less than goes to the left, just like on a number line. The other thing to remember is, if I have a line going this way, greater than or equal to your shade above, less than or equal to your shade below the line. Okay? So greater is above or to the right, less than is to the left or below. Um... Here's the comparisons between linear equations and linear inequalities. For a linear equation, you're going to have an equal sign. For a linear inequality, you're going to have an inequality sign, one of those four. So same thing over here. You have an equal sign. That's your equation. Inequality sign. That's your inequality. Your solution, when you have a linear equation, is a line. And any dot on the line. So you can see I put all those dots on the line. That's your solutions. Okay. For a linear inequality, your solution is going to be a shaded region. So if I have something like this, where it's a solid line and everything above it, any of these dots, and you can see I put a bunch of dots, any of the dots above the line is going to be a solution, any coordinates. Okay? And because it's a solid line, any dot on the line is also a solution, just like how the closed dot on 3 is a solution. So if you have a solid line, that means any dot on the line is a solution and anything above it. This, you can see, because it's a solid line and above, is going to be a greater than or equal to. Okay. In this example, I have a dashed line and everything above it. So this would be a greater than. Because it's like saying an open circle, kind of like this, or a dashed line, everything that way. So this is everything above it, any point above the line, not including the line. So if when you do your points, if you want to graph it, you can use open circles to remind you to dash your line, and you can dash your line if you want. I'm not sure if that shows up on the video, but it is a dash line, and you can use open circles so you know that it's like an open circle on the line graph. Okay, so that's the two differences between an uh, equation and inequality. Um, so now we're going to graph some linear inequalities. So I'm going to do um, a couple here, for uh, four of them, and then... I'll show you the next one after. Let me change the light. So the first one is y 
is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. I, I can use slope intercept. Again, start at your y-intercept and use your slope. So, and because it's a less than or equal to, I know I can use a closed dot because I'm going to have a solid line. So I start at negative 1. My slope is up 2 and over 1, down 2 and to the left 1. Uh, I'm going to use a solid line because it's or equal to. And then the book will show a way where you take a test point that is not on the line. So I could use 0, 0 since it's not on, it's not on the line. Or I could use some easy number like uh, 1, comma 0. You don't want to use a big ugly number like negative 8, comma 7 because then you got to plug it into here. So you want to use easy numbers. If you ever got 0, 0, that's probably the easiest. Um, and I can see it doesn't hit it there. So if I put a 0, 0 here. 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 1. So that's like saying 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. And that is true. So what you want to do is shade on the side with the 0, 0. So you're going to shade on the side with the 0, 0 since it's true. If it was false, I would have put this. So for example, if I use 1, comma 0 for x, if I use 1, 0 this way, it's like saying 0 is greater than or equal to 2 minus 1, which is 1. It's false, so this dot here, or that point there, is false, so I want to shade on the side opposite of the line. Okay, here's Mr. Mike's um, shortcut on how to do this. If it's a greater than, if you put it into slope intercept and it's y is greater than, shade above the line no matter which way the line is going. So for example, if I have a line this way, and it's greater than, I shade this way. If my line is going this way, and it's greater than, I shade over here. I always shade on top of the line. Think of putting a marble on top and falling down so you can see which side is the top. Okay, so on greater than, you shade above the line. If it's less than, you shade below the line, no matter which way it's sloping. Okay, so here's another quick one. Let's do it together. Negative 2 thirds x plus 1. I'm going to start at plus 1, which is my y-intercept. I'm going to go down 2 and over 3. And I'm going to go up 2 and over 3. And because it's an or equal to, I use closed dots and I'm going to have a solid line. And according to my shortcut, less than or equal to means I'm going to shade below. Okay, So you can see how I just shaded pretty simply like this and like this. So my other example here is y is greater than negative x plus 2. Start at plus 2. My slope is negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 over 1 up 1 over 1. And actually, I should have used open circles since it's greater than. Okay, So I'm, I'm just going to change these. I'm not going to change the other one since it's going to require erasing everything. And I use a dashed line. Okay, Make sure it's a clear dashed line. You can see that it's clearly dashed. And because it's greater than, I'm going to shade to the above side. Shade above it. So dashed line shading above. Here's my last example um, graphing I, before I do another one. Sorry. <laughs> start at the origin. My, uh, because it's like having a plus zero, in, invisible plus zero. So start at the origin. Open circle. And I have one there. And my slope is 3 over 2. Rise 3, run 2. Rise 3, run. Or rise negative 3, run negative 2. Use a dashed line. And less than means I shade below the line. Okay, so that's my four graphs I wanted to show you. So again, or equal to means solid line. Greater than or less than means dashed lines with the open circles. Greater than means you shade above it. You shade above it and above it. Less than means you shade below it or you shade below it, no matter which way the slant is. You can see I shaded below. Okay, so here's another example of graphing. And I'm going to solve it two different ways. The first one is changing it into slope intercept. So what I want to do is minus 3x from both sides. Minus 3x. And I get negative 6y is greater than negative 3x plus 12. I'm going to divide by negative 6. And I'm going to get y is, equal, y is greater than 1 half x minus 2. Did you catch my mistake? I did that on purpose. If you forgot, when you divide by a negative, you should have circled and 
flipped your sign. So it should have been a y is less than. Okay, remember when you multiply, divide by negative, you flip the sign. Now I can do, I can graph it that way. Or the other way I can solve it is by x and y intercepts, since it's in, that, in standard form. I can say 3x is greater than 12, and I can say negative 6y is greater than 12. Um, and actually for these, you can just think of them as having an equal sign, because you're just finding the x-intercept, so you don't even need that part of it. Divide by 3, x is equal to 4, so 4 comma 0. Remember to put it into um, coordinates. Divide these by negative 6, and if you notice, I dropped down to negative 6y, okay, not just 6y. Divide by negative 6, again, y is equal to negative 2, 0 comma negative 2, sorry. Okay, so there's two ways that I can solve this in order to graph. Either way, I'm going to get the same answer. Okay, so if I think of it this way, if I did the 4, 0, 1, I can put the, and I'll, sorry, I'm going to go green so I don't mess up the pens. 4 is there, 4, 0. 0, negative 2 is here. It's a less than or greater than, I'm sorry. So I'm going to go this way with a dashed line. Okay. Here's the tricky part, and I wanted to show you this. I have this inequality here where it's a greater than. But if you notice, it's a negative 6y. So if I just shade to the bottom, that would be wrong. Because um, if, I, if I did do the 0, 0 test point, if I put 0, 0 here, I would get 0 minus 0 is greater than 12. 0 is greater than 12, which is false. That means I don't want to shade on that side. I want to shade on the side opposite of the 0, 0. And then you can see when I rearranged it, less than, so it should have shaded to the bottom. What I wanted to point out was this. If you're going to use the x and y intercepts like this up here, be careful that you don't just look at the sign. You have to see this. If it's a negative y, you need to flip the sign. You need to, you need to shade opposite. If it was a plus y, then you can obviously shade on that. So if it, if it was, excuse me, if it was 3x plus 6y is greater than 12, then I, because it's a plus y, I would shade above the line. Okay, so that's the tricky thing I wanted to show you with that one. And that, that's why my shortcut, um, you got to be careful with this, with that shortcut I showed you. You got to make sure it's a positive y, and then you can use the sign and shade above or below it. Okay, just make sure you have a positive y. Okay, write an inequality from the graph. So I have two graphs here, and we're going to write the inequality. So the first one I can see is going to be, if it's shading below, and it is a solid line. Shading below, solid line, I know it's going to be less than or equal to. Okay? If it's, shade, if it's shading above with a dashed line, I know this one is going to be, and I'll go to the side here, it's going to be greater than because it's dashed and above. Okay, now we got to fill out the rest. So I need my slope and my y-intercept. So my slope, I can say I go down to, or I go up to and to the right three. So two-thirds x, that's my slope, up two, right three. And my y-intercept is one, two, plus two. There's my inequality. Okay. Um, the next one is here. My slope is down 1 and over 3, so negative 1 third x, and my y-intercept is plus 1. That's how you write inequalities. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is look for what your inequality is going to be. Solid line means or equal to, shading below means less than. Shading above is greater than, dash means it's just greater than, not or equal to. Okay, here's the last example before I give you your homework checks. So here's a real world problem. Kaylin can spend no more than $24 at the 50th state fair. Um, the rides cost $3 each and the games cost $2 each. Find three combinations of rides and games that she can do. Excuse me, so I have R equals to the number of rides G equals to the number of games. I need to write a single inequality. Okay. So what I would do is, if R is cost $3, then 
that would be 3R. Plus, gains cost $2, 2G. Okay, no more than, this is the keyword, no more than. If you remember, that means less than or equal to $24. She can spend no more than, that means she has to spend $24 or less. Okay, now here's my graph. You can see I made a number of rides here, a number of gains on the bottom. And what I want to do is find the, because it's standard form, X and Y intercepts, or the R and G intercepts. So I can do this, is equal to 24, 2G is equal to 24. And again, you notice I just went to, I went to equal sign so I can just find the um, intercepts. Divide by 3, and R is going to equal to 8. What this is saying is R is equal to 8. The most she can have is 8 rides. So if she only does rides and no games, she can do eight rides because eight times three is 24. So the most she can do is eight. When I find the G, the games, and I divide by two, G is going to equal to 12, which means I can do 12 games. If I don't do any rides, if my rides is zero, I can do 12 games over here. Okay. And then I can do anything... And if you notice it's less than or equal to, that means all of this would be shaded. Okay, So that whole triangle would be shaded. And if I want to find any three combinations, I got two of them already. I can do eight rides. I can do eight rides plus zero gains. I could do zero rides plus 12 gains. And then you could choose any point in here. I could do one and one. Because if I do one ride and one game, that's going to still be less than $24. It'll just be three plus five, five dollars. Okay, so any point in here would be an acceptable answer. So I could say one ride plus five games, which is one ride, five games which would be over here, and that is within the boundaries. Okay, so anything within there would be a good combination. I hope that makes sense. Um, writing inequality was the part that was kind of hard, and you find the intercepts. Write your intercepts because it's less than you can shade below, and any point in here, any region, again, is your answer. Okay, your two homework checks. And I'm going to try and bring this in closer. You can see it closely. Number one is write the inequality for this graph. And I'll make it close. Sorry, going backwards. Write the inequality for that graph. Okay. And number two is describe this graph. And you'll see what I mean in my, in my, um, my answers. It, I want you to tell me what the slope, the intercept, whether it's a solid line, dashed line, or whether you shade above it or below it. So four things. Okay, I want the slope, the intercept, whether it's solid or dashed. Okay, and then whether you shade above the line or below the line. So four things. Okay, and you'll see it in the, in the options. Okay, hope this helps. Take care.